I'm gonna review a product today, a new product to me at least. I haven't given them a fair shot yet and given them a try yet. That is these early human tuning forks. So these neat little things that basically snap on the limb and uh, allow you to align the limbs, set your center shot and do all sorts of different things. I haven't used these yet, so I'm gonna see how they work and share my opinions with you on whether or not I would use these to align my bow. So I haven't tried these out yet. I put them on a set of limbs once, but they didn't necessarily line up the exact same way that my biter blocks do that I usually commonly use. These are what biter blocks look like, by the way, in case you haven't seen them yet. They snap on your limb and use these lines as a reference to set the limb alignment, like the two limbs together and to the center of the bow. And then these are supposed to do the same thing, but not just left to right, adding in a third dimension. That's why they're so much longer than the biter blocks are. So it should give a bit more of a in-depth view as to what is actually going on within the system using more of what you would call parallax, the difference in being able to see stuff over long distances and being able to align them precisely. That's why this is longer and extended to give you more of a reference point so you can set your limbs up more accurately. Normally I use a stabilizer to line up and set everything up, but I'm gonna try setting up this Hoyt Exceed and Win and Win MXT-10 wood limbs and set them up without a stabilizer, without using the biter blocks, using these to get it as straight as I possibly can. Then maybe I'll throw a stabilizer on it and check and see how the alignment looks with the biter blocks just to see what it's telling me. Before I get too far into this video, I will post a link in the description below on where you can get these tuning forks in case you're interested. Kevin's a great guy who makes these from Early Human and I like supporting people who love archery as much as I do. So I feel like I'm going full Korean here. I got a, you know, Hoyt riser and win and win limbs. So I don't know. I just think it's funny because usually this is the Korean go-to win and win limbs and a Hoyt riser. So I just wanted to put this one together. I'm doing some testing. So I figured while I'm at it, I might as well review these uh, tuning forks from Early Human and see how it goes. Before I get too far, if you're interested in learning how to set up your Olympic style recurve and partly set up a bare bow, uh, I will have links in the description below for this book here. It's called Tuning for Performance. Uh, links directly to my website, jkaminski.com. I'll also put a card at the top up there and also on Amazon in case you'd rather purchase it through Amazon. But uh, basically I take you through top to bottom how I set up and align and build arrows and do all sorts of different things with my equipment here. And I don't leave anything out. There is no fluff in this book. It is all information on how you can take your bow from out of the box to go in to compete with it at the Olympic Games, or at least I'm sharing with you how I do my step-by-step -step process here in this book. If you haven't grabbed this yet and you're new to setting up and tuning bows, I would highly recommend it. So first thing I gotta do is I need to get a string on this bow so I can actually uh, align it. Obviously you can't do that without a string. I'm not going to put a rest or sight or any of that stuff on it because that doesn't at all affect how the bow aligns actually. One thing I will grab though is a bow vise. And now that I have the bow clamped in space so nothing's touching the limbs or affecting the alignment of it, yes, the bow vise is clamped onto the limb very gently, but the bow is vertical and sitting in a way that it shouldn't affect it. If it was sitting on the side and giving side loads to the limbs, that's what I'd worry about. So in the box here, there are some instructions to show you how to get them on the limb itself. It shows you how to snap them on and what you're looking for and how you look at the actual, uh, the actual forks here. So the way you snap them on is you go through the limb like this and then you just turn it sideways and that's how it aligns. However, what you need to pay attention to is the angle of this. So right now it was kind of pointy at the string due to the angle and the curvature of the limb. So if I flip it the other way, it makes it nice and flat, a good reference to look at. So you gotta make sure you have them oriented correctly. I'm not sure necessarily where and how far from the, the uh, base of the limb you need to go. I guess it looks like you do it very close to the actual riser to start. You, uh, and then later on in your process, you slide them further away. So I'm gonna do that first really close. It looks like you're supposed to align to 
the bottom first. It says bottom indicator. This is funny though. Maybe, I don't know, Kevin is the, the owner of the company. I'll I'm gonna message him. It says make sure you do the bottom B first. But if you look at the riser there, the top of the riser is over here. So B and T, it says bottom and top, but the riser is oriented incorrectly. So I don't know if it's supposed to be B and T or if B and T just happened to be not, I don't know, don't know. So I'm gonna message him because I think that's funny anyway. Well, good thing I went and checked the instruction manual available on Early Human's website because I was doing it completely wrong. Uh, the instructions on the box, not exactly thorough, at least compared to the ones on their website. So I would recommend if you have a set of these, go to their website and learn how to do it. I'm gonna now attempt to do it with the instructions that they supply on their website showing the correct way to do it. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to position your eye so you can use the two limb tuning forks as a reference as in an X fashion. So if your eye was positioned, you know, somewhere in this area, you would look down the string, put the string in the center of the orange stripe that's right here uh, on the base, near the base, and then you look down here at this one. So if I'm looking at this, first I'm eyeballing the string, putting the string in the center of the uh, the, the stripe down on the bottom and then looking down here and I can see that it is off to the right. So for you, and it's gonna be very difficult for me to show because of the, the camera focus, the depth of field isn't good for this kind of exercise, but essentially from this kind of view, you would want to use your eye and line it up on this stripe down here and then you look at the fork this fork after you align it up down there. And like I said, it's impossible to show, but as you can see, this one, this tip is off to that side when I have the line in the center of the string down there. At least it does to my eye, it shows that it's off. So there is a gap on that side, so I need to shift it that direction. So I'm gonna do that just a little bit and get it to be dead straight and then I'll show you again. All right, so now I've got the bottom lined up with the top. So you can see how when I had the string down the center of this dot line down here, it was in the center of the fork up here. So now I'm gonna flip the bow around and look at it from the other side and see that I have the same issue to the same side. So I will loosen and uh, shift the limbs. And now I've got this side as well. You can see how when I put the string in the center of the stripe, it lines up with this upper one as well. So I'm gonna check the bottom again just to see if it shifted. Maybe a smidge, but I think I was just off to begin with. So I'm gonna move it a little bit more. All right, so we're lined up that way and we're lined up that way. So we're lined up top to bottom, bottom to top, at least as easy as the biter block. So I'm happy about that. I'm afraid to slide them out to check the warp, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I assume you check it the same way when you uh, do this. That one's off a smidge, but not by much. And that one's off a smidge by the same direction. So if you look, you do the same thing with them further out. It's really close. I mean, it's, it's off by the absolute smallest of margins. I think I can make it better the smallest amount. I mean, it appears really close to me. I'm gonna slide them back down after that slight adjustment. Check it this way again. All right, now I'm good there. All right, now it's dead center. So it's dead center all the way in towards the riser and dead center as far out towards the limbs as, or the tips as I can get. I'd say that's pretty, pretty aligned to me, at least according to this method. So now what I think, it looks like when you do it correctly, it centers the limbs how you would expect. But what I'm going to do now, I wanna put biter blocks on without a stabilizer to start and see what it's telling me, 
how line, aligned the limbs are. I'm only doing this because I am so comfortable and used to lining my bows up using the biter blocks. So I just wanna see how it looks in comparison, just out of curiosity. And uh, honestly, it's showing me that the limbs aren't aligned. They're completely off compared to each other. <sighs> Don't know why. I'm gonna put the stabilizer on and see where it's coming from. I'll show you once I get the stabilizer on. So when I do it this way, do it the way I normally do it, if I put the string in the center of the stabilizer and then look at the biter blocks, it looks like the top one is almost perfect and the bottom one is off a considerable amount. I don't know exactly why, and to tell you the truth, I have no idea. I will have to go back and forth with Kevin and maybe he'll comment on this video and give his opinion as to what's going on here and if I'm doing something potentially wrong or or uh, what is happening. I'm not entirely sure, even in the least bit. I'm gonna put some still shots up that I've taken with my phone showing you that the tuning forks show that I'm aligned, but the biter blocks show that I'm nowhere near close to being in lined up, uh, especially the way that I normally line my system up. So the tuning forks show that all the way near the riser, they're pretty close to being perfect, and all the way out, they're basically also perfect. They're very, very close. But when I show you the picture of these biter blocks with the string in the center of the stabilizer, you'll see that it's nowhere close to being in the uh, center of the blocks top and bottom. So not entirely sure what is going on there. Overall, I think with the tuning forks, the X measurement that you look at is actually a really cool idea. And I like that you're able to align the limbs to each other, which should bring the, the, the riser in the center of alignment. So. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure where I'm getting it wrong or what's happening. Like I said, it could be my fault. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe there's something wrong with my bow. I'm not entirely sure. So maybe Kevin will comment below and let us know. Or if you use tuning forks and have done so successfully and you enjoy them and like them, comment below and let me know if maybe I made a mistake or something to that nature. 